Hey there geographers and welcome back to another Mr. Sin video. Today we're going to be looking at Unit 2, Topic 9. We're going to be talking about aging populations. Now last time on the channel we talked about 2.8 where we looked at women and their roles in society and also the laws of migration according to Ravenstein. And if you haven't checked out that video yet, make sure you go and watch that video first. Now over time as society continues to develop both economically and socially, we start to see that the average life expectancy increases. This is because over time the amount of poverty decreases. The amount of inequality, both gender and income, goes down. We see more people gain access to economic opportunities, political opportunities, and are able to be able to afford better health care services. And as technology continues to grow and advance, we also see better services provided, which again allow us to live longer than ever before. And we can also see that societies that reduce the amount of addictive behaviors like drugs, tobacco, and alcohol will see their life expectancy go up as well. Well, and societies that promote healthy diets and also remove junk food and sugars and promote exercise for its citizens will continue to see their standard of living go up and also their life expectancy. And while all of this is really good and society should always focus on increasing the standard of living and also the average life expectancy, there is some changes that are going to happen to society and if society doesn't plan for it, could have some pretty big consequences. For example, as more and more people start to retire, we'll start to see that dependency ratio go up. And as that goes up, that's going to mean we're going to have less people working and more people retired. And those people who are retiring are now going to have new medical bills. They're going to need more services. They're going to need help around the home. All of this means that the society or families are going to have to start paying more to be able to take care of the retired population. And if our workforce is starting to decrease because more people are now retiring, well, we're going to need to raise taxes in order to fill all of the new demand there is for these new services. So we can see that as our society society ages now and starts to retire, there's some economic consequences. The working population is now going to have a bigger burden to be able to take care of not only themselves, but also the people retiring in society. Socially, we can see how aging populations are actually changing family structures. Families have difficult decisions to make as the population ages. Who's going to take care of grandma and grandpa or your parents when they get older? Are they going to live in a nursing home or a senior living facility? If they are, well, who's going to cover the cost for that? that. If it's you or if it's your family, that means you have less money to be able to spend for yourselves. You're going to have less purchasing power as now more of your money needs to go to bills. Or if you have them move in your own home, well, how is that going to work? Are you going to be able to have a multi-generational home that functions well? Sometimes that can create more burdens on a family. On the other hand, we can also see it bring a family closer together. Or some families even elect just to have the grandparents or parents stay in their own house, but then they'll pay people to monitor them or help them out. These are family questions that are changing family dynamics and it all deals with an aging population. Politically, we can see that governments are going to have to deal with an aging population as well. If they don't address the decrease in births and they don't start actually implementing more pronatalist policies to increase the birth rate, they're going to be running out of workers. They might not have even enough soldiers for the military. Their tax base will continue to decrease, which will then make it harder to pay for all the government services, forcing them to go further in debt or have to make difficult decisions on cutting education, healthcare, or spending just in general. Regardless of what scale you're talking about, whether it be the local level, where cities have to figure out how to be able to support their population, where they should build new nursing homes, or whether it be on the national level, where countries have to figure out how they're going to be able to pay for all their programs. How are they going to be able to make sure they have a stable population that can support an aging population and also make sure that they're supporting the future? All right, and that's the main stuff you need to know for topic 2.9. Now, if you found value in this video or any of the other topic videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It really does make a difference and it helps me be able to make more content. Also, don't forget to answer the quiz questions to see if you're getting some of these themes and the concepts we talked about in the video. And if you need more help with AP Human Geography, don't forget to check out that ultimate review packet. It's a great resource that'll help you get a five on the national exam and an A in your class. Thank you for watching. And again, I'm Mr. Sin. And until next time, geographers, I'll see you online.